Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today I want to talk about function overloading and virtual dynamic dispatch and multi-method dynamic dispatch. We'll start with a simple example in C++, where we have struct A in a simple type hierarchy with B that extends A. And we have virtual methods say that are overridden in type B. And these functions are also overloaded to take either an A or a B. Down inside of main, we're going to create a B, pretend it's an A, and call our methods. Let's see what happens. In this case, even though we pretended we have an A, really at runtime it's type B, and the virtual dispatch machinery knows that. So we get the B versions of our functions called. But the overloading, based on the parameter types here, depend entirely on the static version of what the compiler thinks it is. So we get either the A or the B version called without respect to what the type actually is internally at runtime. Now let's take a look at how things work in Julia to contrast with this. But before we get back to a simple A-B example, let's look at a practical example. In the Julia standard library, there's a process.gl that defines open functions which call subprocesses and pass them in command line arguments. And this version right here is a generic version that can make use of other versions of the open function defined earlier. It receives a function that can process the stream and also receives variable numbers of arguments which are forwarded along as well as named arguments. And the version of the function being called depends on all these positional arguments. So for example, we might call a version of open with a redirectable standard IO or with some kind of read write mode string. And the version that gets called up here depends on the types of these arguments. So now let's get back to our simple AB. So here in Julia, I have structs A and B. I haven't bothered with the hierarchy because inheritance is different in Julia anyway, and it's irrelevant to the example. Now I have say functions for AA, AB, BA, and BB, which will get called depending on the runtime types of the arguments being passed in. Down here inside of main, I'm gonna create an A and a B, and I'll call, say, AB. Let's see how it does. We get AB as expected. It calls this version of the method. And to simulate our useful generic function here that could take advantage of others, I made a say swaps function here to simplify this kind of example. And whatever x and y get passed in, whatever the types are, it will call say xy, then also say yx. So let's try out this function and see what happens. As expected, we see a, b, b, a. We can also call the reverse. In Julia, if I haven't specified the types of my parameters, it's as if I had said that they could be of any type. When it gets into this function call, the versions of say they get called depend entirely on the runtime types of whatever gets passed in, which means I could technically pass in a two for a y and then see what happens next. And we get an error saying there's no such thing as say for an a and int 64. This error happens at line 27, because this is the point at which it doesn't find any version of say that can take integers. I could define such a thing for a catch-all, and I get my question marks out, but maybe I didn't want that to happen. Perhaps instead I wanted errors in this case, but I want the error further up the chain by being more explicit in my type for say swaps. So now I've required that x be of type a or b, and the same for y. If I run it, I now get my error at line 38, which is further up the chain, because now there's no version of say swaps either that supports a and an integer. Before we move on from Julia, let's take a look at named arguments also and how those work. First of all, we can expect I might have a problem because of the squigglies, and I do indeed. And the issue is that in Julia, parameters are either positional or named, but not both. So for example, I could make a new version of say that takes named parameter c of type int. And I specify name parameters by putting them after a semicolon. Again, let's see what happens if I run this with an a and a b. And I get an error saying that keyword argument c is not assigned because it's trying to call this version of the function. And the reason why this is happening is because name parameters don't participate in the dynamic dispatch machinery of Julia. When I've created this new function, I've overwritten and redefined the previous function that I had without the name parameter. But having done so, I can call the new version if I want. And I get the ABC here. Or in other words, these name parameters are treated as peripheral metadata and not core to the identity of the method itself as the positional parameters are. Now let's move on to NIM so we can see other related matters. 
NIM, sometime before the 1.0 release, supported multi-methods as Julia does, although by the time of the 1.0 release, they've defaulted to and are moving forward with dynamic dispatch only on the first parameter, which is more common in other languages. So here, like in C++, I've created a type hierarchy of A and B that extends A, and I have my four versions of my method, which I identified to use dynamic dispatch by calling them methods rather than a procedure or a function. Over down here in main, I create an A and a B, and I call, say, AB. Let's see what this does. It says AB as expected. Also, interestingly in NIM, I can use universal function call syntax so that it looks like a method call, and this might help for interpreting the semantics or for improving auto-completion in an editor. And I still get A, B as before. To point out where static and dynamic dispatch are happening, let's do some casting between our types. Let's pretend our B is an A and see what happens. We get A, A because the overloaded version for anything after the first argument is dependent on the static type of our argument rather than the actual runtime dynamic type. So we get AA here instead of AB. However, just like in C++, if I cast the first argument up the chain, NIM still remembers at runtime what that type is. And I get the BA version called despite the cast. Also worth pointing out that we can still make our generic procedures here and even constrain them on being A or B like we had in Julia in order to make a generic function that can call any versions of the overloaded from earlier. And before we move on from NIM, let's take a look at named arguments again. Because in NIM, parameters can be used in either a named or positional manner, so I can try to say A equals A and B equals B. However, we have a problem with this because it says it doesn't know which version of the function to call. I have to make at least one of these positional for to know which overloaded version of the function to call. Also worth pointing out in NIM that we specify our base methods explicitly and don't specify anything on the overridden versions, which is the opposite of what we see, for example, in C++ or C Sharp, where we instead annotate our overridden versions. Let's move on to C Sharp now, where we have a simple class hierarchy again. And unlike C++, I'm not going to make virtual methods. For the moment, I want to emphasize what happens with overloaded parameters instead. And down here in main, I'm going to create an A and a B and call, say, A, B. And as we expect, we get our A, B out. Just like we might expect to see in C++, any of this overloading depends on the static type known to the compiler and not the dynamic type known at runtime. So if I cast B as A, I get an A, A. And similarly, since I'm not using virtual methods in my class hierarchy, if I cast the first parameter, I also get the AA again. Let's now work out a generic version of say swaps like we had before in Julia and NIM. And it might be nice to have a static dispatch version of this. There's not really a way to express the constraints on X and Y, and C Sharp won't create versions of this function for us to handle the various static dispatch options available. But we can use a dynamic type to get multi-methods just like we had in Julia. And that's one of the things that makes C-sharp interesting for the example today. So I call this say swaps AB. We get our ABBA as expected. And furthermore, to point out this is dynamic dispatch, I'm gonna cast B as A and see what comes out. And I get ABBA again, despite the cast, because this dispatch is based on the runtime type. Now, of course, there are many languages in the world that don't support overloading at all. For example, JavaScript, where I guess you could call different class methods overloading in a sense, just like we saw with the virtual methods in C++. But in terms of the parameters themselves, there's no overloading. Whenever you say a function say or say swaps, there's only ever one version of that function. And this is also a design decision I can respect because there's some sanity involved in knowing that when you give a name, you know what it's referring to. However, in TypeScript, being JavaScript, you can't give more than one implementation of a function. You can overload the function signatures. And here in TypeScript, I purposely constrained the options available to just A, B, and B, A to make the example more interesting. And down here inside of main, I create an A and a B. Then I call, say, A, B. Let's see what happens. We get A, B as expected. And just to point out that we've constrained our options, I can't say A, A because none of the functions in the overload set allow for that. 
However, I can still do a say swaps, which also allows A, B, or B, A. And for this particular way of coding it up, I can create a relatively simple implementation by allowing A or B in each case, and then explicitly pretending that X is always an A and Y is always a B. This is a lie, but it passes the TypeScript type checker, and furthermore, actually does constrain my options correctly because of the overloaded options available for the function signatures. If I run this, I get A, B, B, A. And even though I pretended this wasn't happening inside the implementation, the opposite works just fine. In TypeScript, all these typecasts will be discarded at runtime anyway. I may have been able to do some other fancy type gymnastics instead of what I've done here, but it wasn't necessary for this example. Before we finish, I also want to take a look at C, which also supports overloading as of C11 using this generic feature. And to get a quick look at how this works, I've got structures A and B, and I create an A and a B down here. And using static dispatch, generic, we'll see what the type of A is. And this sort of works like a switch statement on the type. And I'll get expression value A or B, depending on the type of A. Let's see what this does. We see we get an A there. And if we change it to a B, we get a B. We can use the generic feature to create preprocessor macros that select from a variety of other functions to use depending on the static types of the arguments to the macro. So for example, if we look at the expansion of say here, we see what it expands to in terms of selecting a function to call depending on the types of A and B. And again, this is a static dispatch. We find that it works as expected. And also using preprocessor macros, we can create generic utilities that take advantage of whatever overloaded versions exist. However, we all know it's not very fun to write extensive amounts of code inside of preprocessor macros. So let's take a look before we finish at Odin, which has a very similar feel and feature set to the C11 generics, only it's a little bit higher level to express our real intentions. So again, I have struct types A and B. I have my four versions of my functions, A, 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 B, B, A, and B, B. And just like in C, they have different names because Odin, C, and JavaScript, among other languages, don't support overloading. But Odin does support explicit overloading with an overload set. So I can say all of these functions can be referred to by the name say if I want to. And then down inside of main, I create an A and a B, and I can call say A, B. And if I run it, I get A, B out like expected. And say swaps also works like I'd expect it to. A, B, B, A. Anyway, I hope this has been fun, and perhaps we can look at these kinds of issues again in the future. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.